Sam, near-death experiences have been used by some people to assert the existence of uh, immortal souls, uh, certainly life beyond death, and it's very controversial. Uh, you're a physician. Uh, you work with uh, uh, acutely ill patients, uh, some of whom undergo cardiac arrest, and you study what happens during that period. Um, give me a sense of, of what you do and how during that period of cardiac arrest with the body and the brain shut down, what we might be able to learn scientifically about the, the, the state of uh, human consciousness. Well, I'm willing to make a bet that you have a very specific concept of death. And my bet is that you believe, and this is the way we've all been conditioned, that's why I think you may be different, but I suspect not. Um, certainly most people out there, uh, if you were to ask them, including physicians, uh, will think this way, that essentially death is a black and white moment. Okay? You're either dead or you're alive. I mean, can't be both, right? And if you look at society, this is permeated. If you watch films, if you watch uh, shows, etc., you know, the guy gets shot, he's alive, and then he's dead. And when he's dead, that's it. That's the end. And our definitions and concepts of death are really that it's an irreversible terminal event. <clears throat> And you see this, doctors write death notes. They give a specific time, 9.42. Mr. So-and-so died at 9.42 precisely, and that's the legal record. Why is that? That's because for thousands of years, um, essentially, when the heart stopped, a person becomes motionless, lifeless, and they are irreversibly dead. Nothing could be done for them. So the heart stops, the person stops breathing immediately because no blood is flowing, there's no oxygen mm -hmm. delivered to the body. The brain shuts down within seconds, and it flatlines completely, and you can declare them dead. And that's how we do it still in hospitals today all over the world. However, what's important to realize, and this is the, the big discovery of the 21st century, is that actually, just because someone's died, and I've given them a death note as a physician, as an intensive care physician, the cells inside the body have not yet died. Why would they? Mm -hmm. And in fact, cells can be, remain viable. They don't function after you die. They completely shut down. But they are in this sort of hibernating, viable state for many hours after death. And we used to think that brain cells, neurons, only had like five or ten minutes before they became irreversibly damaged. And we now realize that's not true. Brain cells actually have hours of time mm. after blood flow has stopped to them before they become irreversibly damaged and die. So there was a f very famous study from about ten years ago where a group of scientists in California, published in Nature, uh, took uh, people who were in a cor corpses that had been sent to a mortuary, and they took core brain biopsies, and they, many hours, 7, 10, 15 hours after death, and they took these cells and they took them to the laboratory, and they managed to show that you can actually grow neuronal stem cells mm. from mm. corpses, okay, oh. which just proves that point. So now, take it to the concept of death. We consider death to be irreversible, and clearly, if you leave a corpse long enough, then the damage to the cells will be so extensive that no matter what we do today or tomorrow, we can't revive them. However, today, we've managed to discover ways to essentially manipulate those processes by which cells are dying in a person who's just died and restart the heart, thus bring the person back to life, not just minutes, but hours after they've died. Mm -hmm. Every day you hear of records of people who've essentially gone for four, five, six hours and then been revived. And the future, I think, will extend further. So now you have this fascinating situation where you have this gray zone where people have died. There's no, no doubt about that. Um, yet they're brought back. So two things come out of this. One, as a physician, uh, my role, my interest in this area is to ensure that we can learn how to manipulate those processes and bring back a whole person to society rather than cases like Terry Schiavo where people end up with brain damage. Mm -hmm. However, the flip side of this we cannot deny that human beings are conscious thinking entities and that essentially we don't want to bring back a, uh, a husk, a shell. We want to bring back a whole person with full consciousness, the mind, the psyche, the soul of the person with them. And so we study consciousness after the period of death, after someone's gone through cardiac arrest. And what we're beginning to demonstrate is that actually, contrary to our perceptions, consciousness does not become annihilated just because a person has just died. And in fact, consciousness appears to continue um, at least in the first period, the early period of death, the first minutes or hours after death. 
Beyond that, of course, we can't study because that's the extreme, that, that's the extent that we can get to. I don't know what will happen in the future, but certainly during the time when the brain is shut down and flatlined, the entity of consciousness does not get lost. Now, why is that? Because if you think about it, again, we have these very emotional concepts about death. Death is a biological process. And when you stop blood flow to brain cells, they undergo certain changes and will eventually become damaged. However, the first thing that happens is that you stop oxygen delivery to the areas inside the core of the brain that modulate your sense of being awake and alert. Mm -hmm. Okay, the reticular activating system, various other parts. And so it's very similar to the effect of, say, giving a general anesthetic to somebody. If you give a high enough dose of general anesthetic to a patient or person, then you basically shut down those areas of the brain and the person's consciousness looks like it's lost, flips out of sight. Okay, but we wouldn't say that person's consciousness has become annihilated forever. Right. We just realize mm -hmm. it's gone temporarily. And so when people first die, what's happening is that oxygen is stopping to those parts of the brain and it's essentially taking consciousness out of you and making it disappear. But it doesn't necessarily disappear forever at that time. So we actually have made a lot of advances because if you think about it, in society until now, the idea about death is very much embedded in personal views, philosophical views, theological views. And for the first time in history, we're able to take the objectivity of science and study what happens. And at the very least, we can say that the idea that some people have that, oh, the moment I die, that's it, I'm gone, doesn't seem to be correct. Your consciousness does not disappear, even though it looks to be out of sight in that early phase. But the consciousness is co-temporal with the, um, the, the viability of neuronal cells. You, you said that. And so during this period, whether it's uh, for, for a half hour or for several hours, as you now can do, which is marvelous, uh, the, the potential consciousness is, is, is co-temporous with neur neurons still being able to be activated. So it's hard to say that the brain is totally flatlined and yet consciousness still seems to exist. Uh, it, it doesn't seem like you can, you can clearly tease apart one from the other if indeed the consciousness does reflect some kind of reality. Well, of course, as you know, and uh, this has been the big debating point, not just for you and I today, but uh, uh, people well before us mm. who've now passed away, <laughs> great philosophers, permanently, permanently <laughs> that's right. And uh, I'm sure this conversation will go on mm. with our children right. and various right. others. But we don't know the relationship between consciousness and the brain. And if you divide up the world just for gross oversimplification, you have two camps, whether scientists or non-scientists. Certain scientists believe, no matter what, that consciousness is produced from brain cell activity, even though we have no evidence or understanding of how brain cells could possibly generate Correct. a thought. Uh, we understand how brain cells work. We have these amazing microscopes sure. that can look at the minute structures inside the cells. We can see how they produce proteins and chemicals. There's no room for thought. There's no room for consciousness within them. And if you were to look at a brain cell down a microscope and I were to say to you, you know, this brain cell, fascinating, it's thinking I'm hungry right now. Or if I were to throw a brick at my neighbor's window and this, my brain cell is now feeling guilty about that, you say it's crazy. Brain cells don't think. So why would it be that somehow if you connect 10 or 100 or 1,000 or a million or a billion of these cells together through electricity and chemical sig uh, signals, they would somehow produce the amazing phenomena of thought and consciousness. So that's the big dilemma. There are some people who say, well, I don't know how, but it must be in there. And then there are a Nobel Prize winners like Francis Crick, the co-discoverer of DNA, fall into that category. Then you have the other group of scientists, some very eminent scientists, who actually say, you know what, maybe we have to put our hands up and accept that the brain cells are not that different to other cells in the body and they cannot generate they don't have the machinery to generate thoughts and consciousness of course consciousness interacts with the brain but maybe it's a separate scientific entity that hasn't been discovered what could that possibly be if consciousness is not directly related to the brain in some identity theory not produced by the brain you mean uh, okay uh, the same you know, is that what you mean uh, yes ident in other words that consciousness is Produced by the brain and is the brain are two separate concepts. Right. Produced by the brain is one thing, it's an emergent property. But to say consciousness is some sequence of neural impulses right. or something, I mean, it's, it's a real identity. It's uh, it was produced, it may be produced because it needs some other things. But the, the, the hardcore materialists basically have to say that the consciousness is something in the brain as, as an identity. And so if that, if that is not the case, if consciousness is something other than that, and you say it's a scientifically discerned 
could be a scientifically discerned factor, what could it conceivably be? Well, think about it. Thoughts exist all the time. I mean, we have thoughts all the time. And it, I don't think anyone could really deny that we have. We're thinking conscious beings. So they must have some sort of nature, some sort of materiality, some sort of physics, whatever you want to call it. But clearly it is of a set, very subtle nature such that we can't perceive it with our five senses. Like most things around the universe, frankly, that we cannot mm -hmm. perceive. Right now we cannot perceive electromagnetic waves, yet we know that they're, they're here, they're everywhere. And electromagnetic waves have been here, they were here 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago, a million years ago before we discovered them as human beings. So it's the same thing with human consciousness. We haven't yet discovered it. I think it, um, I tend to lean towards the idea that it exists. It's of a very subtle type of uh, nature or materiality that we haven't yet discovered, but it isn't magical. It's not non-scientific. Um, and don't forget throughout history, whenever things were not discovered through science, people used to call them magic. You know what I mean? But I think it exists. Uh, the key thing though here is, does consciousness die with the brain? or does it continue? Many scientists such as myself were originally sort of, you know, we were brought up to believe that consciousness and the brain are basically the same thing. And I'm no different. However, when you examine the results of studies in people who've gone through clinical death, through cardiac arrest, for these ever extended periods of time, we see that there are clear cases where people have had conscious, have consciousness has continued, but the brain has flatlined. And therefore that uh, puts a doubt on that hypothesis, and it suggests we, we could have been wrong. Maybe consciousness is a separate entity to the brain, uh, but it uses a brain like electromagnetic waves need a TV set to, to show their uh, sound and picture.